There's something different in here and I can't figure out what it is. Hey everyone, Greg Cazillo from Cazillo.com. Welcome to another Keep Shooting Monday. Today on Keep Shooting Monday, I have a new photo assignment. Also have the winners from the Pet Portrait Contest. Uh, not really contest, but you know what I mean, the assignment. And uh, oh, there's so many good ones, I can't wait to talk about them. Uh, anyway, this week in photography news, the D7100 from Nikon is actually shipping from Amazon. You can pick it up from this link. And Nikon and Canon actually just released their rebates that are coming up for the spring. So make sure you check those out if you would like to purchase any gear. If there's any gear you'd like me to talk about, actually brings me to my next thing that I wanted to mention. I need your help. Uh, Keep Shooting Monday is really about what you guys want to see. Obviously, I've started it out in a certain way to kind of get it going. But what do you guys want to see more of? Uh, I kind of did that survey not that long ago, and that gave me a lot of really good ideas. But um, just comment here on YouTube, comment on the blog, let me know what it is. Um, if you have a photo-related article you want me to talk about, or obviously a question, because I answer questions every week, that's great. Keep them coming as always. But um, you know, let me know what it is, what's going to keep you coming back week after week to watch the show, and what's going to keep you sharing this with all of your other friends, posting it on blogs, posting it on forums so that other people can watch it and enjoy it and get addicted to it, hopefully. Um, so let me know what those things are and um, hopefully we can keep it going. Our first gazillion question comes from Rob. I need a website that I can put passwords on so parents can view photos of their children. Any ideas? I use an application called Gallery 3. It's an awesome photo manager. It's kind of like Flickr for your own website. It has a password protected area so that only certain albums people can see. Um, I've actually been using it since Gallery 1. They're now up to Gallery 3. Uh, you have a shopping cart, you have the password area. You want to actually run it on your own web server, so uh, you do need a hosting account with PHP and MySQL in order to make it run. Um, can be a little finicky to get it set up, but once it's set up and running, it's awesome. Absolutely love it. If you would like to install it and you're not real familiar with the web or how to install applications on the web, I would just contact your web host or your local website designer and they'll be able to help you out to get that installed. If you do need some help, but as always though, go ahead and post a question over on the forum and I'll gladly help you out there. Any advice on which AA rechargeable batteries are best? Yeah, I shortened that question a lot. Anyway, I use a PowerX charger. You can pick it up here from Amazon. And uh, a lot of people have told me that the Aniloop batteries are really good. I've not had very good luck with those. I prefer the Energizer ones. I've also used the Duracell AA rechargeables. Um, the Energizer ones seem to hold a good charge. And you know what else? The Rayovac ones that I've tested, I haven't had any problems with those either. Uh, I use both of them. I actually have little cases for them. And what I actually do is I take these little cases and when they're completely charged and they're ready to go, I have all the batteries lined up in the same direction. Then I put them back in the case when I'm done and I'll flip one of the batteries so that it's backwards and I know which ones I need to charge, which ones I don't need to charge. The key to any of these batteries, I think, when you're using them is making sure that you have a good charger that charges each battery separately. A lot of times the chargers that come with them, especially the Energizer packs, like I think I'd gone to Sam's Club and gotten a pack of them. Um, I think it was four or six or whatever with double A's and triple A's. Anyway, it came with this little charger and it's charging all four of the batteries at one, uh, kind of as one unit. You need to make sure you have a good charger that will charge each battery separately, give you a, um, I think they call it a, like drain the batteries all the way. I forget what that term is. Anyway, that is the way you want to go. They should last you a good long time. Um, also, this article, it's funny, this is kind of timely. 
Uh, David Hobby from Strobus posted a link to this guy. I'll put actually put a link to both, uh, which is a cool little charger, allow you to charge your batteries as well as your iPhone. So if you're out on a shoot and you have your AA batteries, you want to pack minimally, which is uh, one of the points that he had in his because he was, I think he said he was overseas in the article. You're able to either charge your your cell phone, your iPhone, your whatever device, your USB device. Or you can charge just the, the uh, actual AA batteries up. And so that's really cool. Less equipment to carry around is always a good thing. I have not tried one of these out, but uh, David said that it's pretty cool. So check out the article and also the product. Question from Bill to the Kazillions Forum. Do you have any tips or tricks for getting nice blue skies and still getting good exposure in the rest of the photo? I know I can throw a graduated neutral density filter on, but that's not always practical. Is it a matter of exposure or aperture or both or question? There actually are no tricks when it comes to getting a blue sky. It's coming down to only a couple of things. Number one is exposure. Number two is time of day. And number three is angle to the sun. Uh, if you underexpose, which I often do with my sunsets, you're going to get a deeper blue sky. But that doesn't mean that your foreground is going to be able to allow that. Sometimes you can add a flash to make to fix it, but not always. Uh, number two, time of day. Shoot later or earlier, early in the day. That's going to make it happen. You're going to have that sun at a lower angle and more of the sky is going to be darker, which is going to give you a better exposure and a you know, darker sky. Third thing, uh, the angle to the sun. If this is my main light right here, if that's actually the sun and I point the camera this direction, that's going to give me, it's going to make it real bright. But if I point the camera that way, then it's not going to be a problem and it's going to be dark. The sky's going to be darker over that way. So angle, exposure, and time of day are the three things that are going to give you blue skies. That brings me to my next photo assignment, which is going to be blue skies. Do your very best to create any kind of a blue sky photo. It could be a scenic. It could be a portrait. Do whatever you want, a cool landscape, um, sports photo, any kind of a cool blue sky, you know, with nice clouds, anything or anything. That's what I'm looking for. So let's really try and work on this. Again, time of day is everything, in my opinion, when I'm, when I'm working on a blue sky. So um, keep that in mind. Now, as far as your photo assignment is concerned, all the photos have to be in two Fridays from now. I th this is the 16th. Uh, I forget. Anyway, uh, I'll put it right here. <laughs> so it has to be in by Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, posted to the forum. Um, no photos from earlier that are eligible. It has to be in the week and a half or two weeks after I put this video up. And there's some other rules and stuff. So check out the forum before you post them. Thanks. Frosty the Beer Man asks, Hi Greg, great video. Looking forward to seeing the pictures with Gracie. I wonder if you could do a video of your backdrop in this video, how you light it. Maybe something many viewers would appreciate you doing. Thanks in advance, Frosty. Funny you asked that question there, Frosty. Since this happened to be the week that I changed my background, actually, I kind of lied. I kind of saved this for another week. But anyway, it's actually good timing. Uh, the background, the older background, which you see, and I'm still going to use, just not for Keep Shooting Monday, is the normal portrait background that we like and we use quite often. It's actually made of a big sheet of canvas and hand-painted. And uh, there's plenty of articles out on the web, and I'll include a link to one here of how to actually paint your own. The biggest thing when you're making your own is to make sure that it's big enough. Um, I prefer to have them relatively dark. Uh, it's, they seem to be more of a classic look, whereas the white doesn't quite work as well, I don't think, when it comes to your photographs. Um, I mean, white is cool sometimes. Uh, but darker is typically better if you're really going to invest the time and the money into them, uh, especially a, a nicer one like this one is. Um, take your time, get it looking good. The nice thing about it is, is if you screw up, you can always start over, you can always go over it. But if you spend three, four hundred dollars on the background, you probably won't want to really play with it too much. Maybe you don't quite like it or color's a little off or something. 
but if you just need a little bit different color paint when you're working on your own, eh, go buy another can of paint, throw some more on it, and you're done. So um, make sure it's big enough. Here in the studio, we actually have them on a roller system. With, it's a, there's a button over there that allows you to raise and lower the background, and so that works out well. Now, as far as my new background for Keep Shooting Monday, uh, this is actually what's called a step and repeat background. We printed it with our uh, new 44 inch Epson printer. We have a 44 and a 24 inch Epson printer here in the studio. And so we just, I said, you know what, I want to try this. I think it'll be really cool, but there's no reason for me to go out and order a step and repeat background if I don't need to. I just printed it in house right on some banner material, hung it up, and I think it's pretty neat. Now we've talked about backgrounds. Let's talk about background support and how to get that background that you just made up in the air so you can actually put a photo on it or put a photo on it, put a, I don't know. Anyway, um, I have a couple things set up here that I want you to look at and uh, so we'll break it down here. First, this is what's called a math pole or an auto pole. Auto pole is the Bogan slash Manfrotto name. They are wonderful. The thing I love about these is I can put them right up against a wall to support a background versus a stand where you have the three legs, pulls it away from the wall, foot, foot and a half. That's why I love these auto pole slash math pole. Math pole, math use is a little bit higher end, more professional brand. Um, I should say more heavy duty brand that's usually used in video and um, uh, those kinds of uh, video film shooting rather than photography, which is the Manfrotto Bogan. And anyway, um, this is the way that they do it. You have this, what's, this is what's called a super clamp, and then you have this little guy right here, which attaches and holds this guy, which actually allows us to uh, bring it up and bring it down. It actually has the chain and the weight. And what happens is, is this expands inside of the paper core and holds the whole thing up. You can't see it out of the camera, but there's actually another one of those over on that side. Um, just allowing the whole rig to stay on the, stay standing and stay up there. Wonderful system. I use it all the time. Um, here's two different shapes of these little holders. And actually, I should have disconnected that. Anyway, they actually make these so that they go into the super clamp the right way with this little certain size, I don't know what it is, bolt head kind of a thing. And anyway, it slides in here perfectly. This one you can use for like a two by four if you need to support a background like that. And this one you would use for more of a rounded pole. Not that it really super matters. This is the only one that's really specific for this type of uh, background support for the paper cores. Now, if you're going to use a fabric, typically you want to use a, some kind of a solid um, aluminum something or other inside of the background. There's actually, a, 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 I forget what it's called. It's like almost like a spot where it's like folded over and sewn. You would slide this inside of there, and then you have your background, and then you slide it on top, and you're done. Now, if I'm going to use more than one background for the same shoot, Typically what I'll do is I'll use this thing and then I can put one up here, one down here, one down here. And if I have three different colors of paper, I actually have three different colors of chain and weights and all that stuff. And so I can then have all these backgrounds. I can either mount this to the wall permanently or I can take this and put it right on that super clamp and kind of just screw it right to that super clamp and it would hold it up for me. So um, background support, that's pretty much it and uh, let me know if you have questions. By the way, I'm sure there's tons of DIY ways to do this. Just Google around if you can't spend the money on the, the full professional equipment, but this, in my mind, is the right way to support a background. I kept seven photos from the Pet Portrait Contest. I'm definitely gonna have to run this one again. Uh, this was a really cool assignment. You guys really got into it, and there are some awesome submissions here. Uh, the first one, which is our only bird, uh, is this one from Victor. Uh, when he posted it, he said, um, enough of pets with four legs, which is really cool. One thing that would have made it better is since you have a Coors Light glass, that you actually have something that looks like beer. Obviously, we don't want to be feeding beer to our pets. Uh, we probably shouldn't be ingesting that much uh, as we do already, especially me. But... Um, at least if it was something that looks like beer in a Coors Light glass, I think that would have been better. Um, 
Next one is this one from Mary. Love this photo of your horse. Love the light that's just falling on the face, just kind of wrapping around in the shadow. Excellent photo. Absolutely love it. Uh, this next one from Josh. Once again, the light makes this photo. You got your dog, uh, Lucy, uh, Chocolate Lab sitting there. Really nice light later in the day, a little bit warmer light. Um, love the background, everything about it. Awesome photograph. Next one, Adriano. Ah, love this picture. Um, uh, Kala is the name of his pet. He says that it usually sits there for a long time. It doesn't move a whole lot, so it's easy to get uh, a good photo of it. I uh, love the use of additional flash. I think that's really what makes it. If it just would have been just an available light photo, it wouldn't have been anywhere near as good. Love the dark and light contrast of it. Works really well. Next one, Chris. And I think, uh, yeah, Chris, yours is third. Um, this photo of Ziggy, uh, love it. The perspective is actually really good using a 50 millimeter 1.4 lens, a little bit of flash to fill the foreground because you needed to get rid of that shadow, the nice background in it with the blue sky and the clouds. By the way, make sure you do your photo assignment for this week, which is a blue sky. And anyway, Ziggy is really cool in my book. This next one is Oscar. Cool photo of Oscar. He was actually running. Two things that make this work. Number one, it's action. Everything is nice and sharp, but you can still see that Oscar is running. Number two, he is completely in the shot. I love the shadow, but his eyes are looking right at the camera, and you can tell that they're playing and having fun and really works. Last one, though, from Jim. This one is my favorite. I love how it's very intense, the light coming in from the sides. Um, just everything about it. Juni uh, is, uh, I'm guessing it's a yellow lab. Can't really tell 100%. Could be some kind of a mutt. You really never know. But um, love the light. Love how square it is and how uh, kind of perfect it is. You see a little bit of ear, but you can definitely tell it's a dog. Absolutely love this photo of Juni. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. Jim is the winner of this week's Keep Shooting Photo Assignment. Make sure you submit yours. And any other questions or anything, make sure you help me out with that, uh, uh, my little survey thing for Keep Shooting Monday. So, uh, yeah, I think that's it. Greg Cazillo, cazillo.com. Thanks, guys. Keep shooting. <laughs>